yo, yo, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, Maurice Ashley, GM Ashley. Today, I got some different stuff to show you guys because I blew my, blew my own mind today. Today, I blew my own mind. I mean, I'm going to show you some stuff today that you're, I, I hope you're going to have the same feeling I had today that I was like, <gasps> what the hell? What was that? It's insane, the stuff I have to show you today. Some good stuff. I'm going to start with a little bit of a lightweight stuff, relatively speaking, you know, GM style. But then I'm going to build it up. Got a little funny story to share with you as well about a little incident with Kasparov. And then I'm going to show you this puzzle that's just like, what? <laughs> what? You're going to have some fun with it. We're going to have some fun with it. So let's get to some chess. And I want to start. I don't know if you guys know that I love to create puzzles. I've been a puzzle creator over the years. And I just love it. You know, I don't play anymore. I do commentary. So one of my side things is just to come up with these crazy puzzles. And I've come up with some interesting ones, you know, some fun ones. Like I said, today's is going to blow your mind. That's my point. I want to blow your mind with a puzzle that I actually improved on eight years later. Yes, eight years later. You got it right. I created a puzzle eight years ago. And eight years later, I improved on it. But the improvement is like psycho. So we're just going to get into this. Let's jump right into our first puzzle, this one. Now. This puzzle is white to move and win. Now, a lot of people like to have puzzles where the initial position looks like something that could theoretically happen from a game, right? It looks like a, like it could be a chess position. So here's this puzzle that I want you to take a look at. It is white to move and win. And the maneuver to win, it's not super difficult. It's just fun. It's just like, what? That's what you have to do? And it's really extraordinary this position and there's there's only one way to win a matter of fact and as you can see here uh white's got a knight for a pawn but it's already close to an end game if this king weren't in this corner it'd be more likely or not that this position would be drawn but this king is in the corner so there's some chances to go at it so i don't know what you might be thinking right now what do you see as a move but i want to jump into this puzzle and really show you this this maneuver that's like really like that okay so the first move in this position is the move queen to g7 check all right i'm sure a lot of you probably spotted that it was either that or queen d1 and now there's only one move king b1 and now the move queen to b7 check so we have the queen go here and now it's gone over to this square now, in this position, black has to be very careful because if black ever steps onto the second rank with king c2, white gets what he wants, which is this move, queen g2 check. That's what white is aiming for, all right? And this is going to lead to a position that's winning, as we're going to see shortly. So queen b7 check to start it off. And now the king has to go back into the corner. No choice. And now a long move, queen h1 check. The best move in the position right now. Now, so far, the queen has done this, it's done this, and it's done this, okay? This queen is cruising across the board. Slide, electric slide style. So now you have only one move, which is queen to b1. And now white plays the move queen to a8 check. So we've got the queen that did this, the queen did this, the queen did this, and now the queen has done that all the way back to the other side, all right? Only one move, queen a2. <laughs> and now... Again, all this is the only move to win. The only maneuver that wins. Queen to H8 check. Need I remind you of the path of how you got here, then you went here, then you went back here, and now you went here, all in just a straight sequence. Finally, King B1, and now Queen H1 check. And so we got this action. Excuse me, I'm getting carried away with myself. This, 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 that. I mean... It's like mass confusion, okay? Queen h1 check. Now the king has to go to c2. This is the position we said he did not want to do. And now we zigzag in on him. Queen g2 check. Has to go defend. Don't play king here because we'll fork you. Watch out. So queen g2 check. King b1. Queen f1 check. King c2. Queen e2 check. And now pick your poison. If you go up, you lose your queen. If you go here, we're going to fork you. 
And finally, if you go back to B1, you get mated. Is that nuts? Is that crazy? I mean, we started here, and the maneuver was here, 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 there, there, zit. Oops, I messed up that arrow. Jeez, I messed up the arrow. That was going to be such a sweet series. Anyway, we're going to do that again, and this time I'm going to get it right. There, 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 there. That is the winning path of the queen to win this position. All queen moves all the way down to deliver mate. Sweet, right? Not bad, not bad. This is a nice little puzzle I want to share with you. This is one of my earlier joints that I had a little bit of fun with. Uh, I haven't seen these puzzles in a while, but I went back into my Facebook, old Facebook post from eight years ago, long time ago, and started looking at some of my old puzzles, and I found this one. I found a few of them that I'm going to share with you, and that was one of them. And EXC 313 NT said that this is like a treasure hunt, and it really was, and we've got uh, some ideas. Now, remember, this fork is impossible because this pawn always stopped that, so that was never a possibility. The queen had to do what it did. <laughs> Maurice went back to his MySpace page. You man, funny there, all right? <laughs> Cool. All right, so that was that puzzle. Now I want to share with you another puzzle before I get into the good stuff, all right? And I got a story that's associated with this puzzle right here. So this position I came up on by accident. Usually a lot of these things I'm doing, I'm teaching somebody and a position occurs, and then I'm like, this is really interesting. Let me make it into a puzzle. So I got to this position in some, some situation, I think a pawn was back on, H, like this pawn was back on H5, and this pawn was on G3, and I was trying to figure out how to make, how the white could possibly win in a different position with the king not there, the black king not there, obviously. And as I worked on it, I couldn't quite win the position, so now I get to this one, and I'm looking at it, and I realize that there's something really cool about this puzzle. And the point is that this Position, this pawn is passed, but this king, this knight is only one move. It's like white to move and win. How does white win? Where should the knight go to win this game? So what is the target square? This knight is going to go on a, on a trek. Well, what is the target square for this knight? Like, where should it go? And so I figured it out, and I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. So I had a meeting with... Gary Kasparov, we were talking business, some project we were dealing with. And as we were talking about it, I said, you know what? I have this position to show you. So Gary, I show Gary this position. I'm at his crib in, in New York, right? So I show him this position and he looks at it and it's Gary Kasparov. So he's like, all right, uh, duh, knight f2 is the only move. So I said, yeah, that's true. So now king e3. Now, the problem for white is if white backs the king up to guard this knight so you can start to make progress, black goes back and it's just a repetition. There's nothing you can do. You have to bring your king back and that's just random, right? So after knight f2, king e3, king back doesn't work. But where else can you put your knight? Your knight's stuck. You're not going back to h1. That's just ridiculous. So the only move is knight d1, all right? So this, this is going to get easy really fast. King d2. Now, we know what happens if you go back to F2. The guy's going to bring his king back to E3. You're going to have to repeat the position. So the only move is knight to B2. No other move. Now, king C3. Knight's being chased. And now we get to the only move again, knight A4. Now, remember, the knight started on H1, so now it's on this A4 move. Now, king to B4. And again, the only move, we don't want to go back on the, the merry-go-round, is knight B6. Now king to c5, and finally, we have an alternative. We have options. The only move that makes any progress here, you have, you have a choice between these two squares, one looks logical, one not so much, is the move knight to c8. If we start playing around with moves like this one and this one, for example, uh, black plays this move, and when you try to go here, black goes here, and you're starting, like you're like, what, I'm not making any progress, what am I doing? But if you instead go to c8, now you suddenly squeeze black a little. Black cannot attack the knight, so black heads back 
over to the pawns. Checking here. And now this move and this whole trick, this whole trek, the trick with the trek, trick or treat, yeah, whatever, uh, I'm, I'm bugging out, is for the knight was to get from h1 to get to f5. So we've seen this like travel, the same travel maneuver we saw with the queen in the last puzzle, where the knight did this and this and this and this and this and this and now this. Not a bad little diagram, actually. All right. Now, here I'm going to show you what's cool about this puzzle. So the knight goes to f5. Now, the point here is the threat is knight takes h4. So if you play this move, suddenly, boom, and that wakes you up. Takes, takes, and this is a winning king and pawn ending because the king is ahead and this king cannot get back in front. So after knight f5, this king has to go backwards. And that's all white needed to see happen because now that white has placed the knight on f5, now it's time to bring the big dog over. King g2, king e5 is fine. King f3, king f6, king to e4. And now finally this move H3, the last hope of hopes, because he's about to get zugged out his gourd. The knight can wait, or you can play king d5 first. You can play h2. But we bring the knight back. And now the knight doesn't have to do anything because this king simply has to move and allow this other king, as you wish, to take your pawn. And this ending is winning. Uh, black can't do anything about it because white will always be able to move this knight to h1 in order to make black get out of the position. So this position is winning. What a march, right? The knight went from this square, and again, the march was this, 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 that, that, this, 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 the knight tour to go to a square that it could have gone to in one move on move one. Not so bad. Not so bad. All right. That was that. Okay. So I was all proud of this puzzle. I'm feeling good. You know, like, yeah, showed it to Gary Kasparov. Let's get back to the top. Uh, this position right here. And I showed him the puzzle. And Gary goes, yeah, but, you know, it was kind of straight. And I'm like, straight? I, you know, when he's saying straight, he's saying it's all like you have to do those moves. There's nothing special about it. And he said it with a look on his face like, you know, you're showing me this, you know, me, you know, it's Gary Kasparov, you're showing a puzzle. You're supposed to be doing something nice, right? Something that he's going to be proud of. You're going to be like, yeah, I showed Gary Kasparov a puzzle. And he was like, yeah, I was mad nice. I was cool. I was excellent. And instead he's like looking at you like, yo, dude, this is not even a puzzle. This, this is just straight. <laughs> I was like, what? So <laughs> I go home, I go home. And I'm going home, right, after I leave his apartment, I'm going home, and I had this nagging feeling that I just disappointed the greatest chess player, or one of arguably the greatest chess players in the history of all time. And I just gave him a whack puzzle. So you know that did not sit right with me. I thought it was cool, right? I'm hearing a couple of you saying that was a nice puzzle. But <laughs> he just, like, it was straight. Damn, Gary. Okay, way to knock a brother off his perch. So... I said, okay, I got to fix this puzzle. So I fixed it and I spent three hours, three hours fixing the puzzle. All right, three hours. And I came up on this position. Now take a look, small nuance. There's a pawn on a6, there's a pawn on a7, white pawn on a6, white pawn on a7, small nuance. What's the difference that it's gonna make? Well, it's gonna make a world of a difference. I'm gonna now show you the difference that it makes. And yes, Gary wanted some more complexity, hard to impress. You're right. So now, what now? Like, figure this one out. So here's the solution. I'm gonna show you the solution. Knight f2, still the only move. King to e3, knight d1. We're going along this path. We've seen this story before, all right? We're traveling along. And now we get to this point in the yellow brick road and the knight, has an obstacle, but this is not hard. You guys can see white can play the next move. Who sees it? You guys, I know you see the next move white actually has and is able to play is, I'm waiting for you guys to tell me, come on now. I know you see it. 
I know the chat sees the move. Come on. Let him take the night. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Euro switch. Sack the night. Everybody's noticing. Boom. Night B6. Anyway, so we continue along our path. We can get away with this move. No problem. Because you obviously cannot take the night. Because we're queening quickly. Right? So, that's not a problem. So, black is in deep hurt. Because this knight is headed to the other side of the board. But black has an A pawn. So what does black do? King A5. Black says, all right, while you're busy doing your thing, I'm going to do my thing. And black plays this move. Now, I wish I could have made this puzzle so deep, so cool, so awesome, that my next move was forced. But in fact, I only have one job on the next move, and that is to stop the black king from being able to go here in two moves. It's my only job. And unfortunately, there are two... There are three ways, actually, to pull off this task. And so I can't say this puzzle is pure at this point in the puzzle. One way is to play this move, knight c8, so that you can play knight here. You cannot let the king go here. This is the key. You cannot let the king get out of the way of the pawn immediately. You must force the king to lose a tempo because the king needs to help its pawn. You cannot make it make an efficient move. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to play check. And then on this move, again, stop the king from going to this square. You'll see why in a second. The other way to do it is this crazy move. I wish this was the only move. When you're creating puzzles, you want the purest of the pure moves to be the right move. Like this would have been so sweet. And I see you spotted it. EXC313NT. That's such a complex name. I don't even know how to describe it. But anyway, knight. A8, same idea, being that here, again, the knight is headed to go after this pawn, but it stops this move. That's probably the prettiest way to pull it off. The prettiest way, I would say so. So now, in this position, the king has to head up the board. It has to. It's going to go help its pawn. So knight e6, king to b4, king to b4 which is... Similar to this position, I had knight c8. So I'm going to go with my main line, which had a knight c8 uh, line in there. I'm going to go knight c8 in this position so we can follow my main line. Knight d6, king e5, knight f7, king b4, and now knight takes g5. All right? So white has accomplished the first goal. White has taken the pawn on g5. Now, black's like, I got to go. <laughs> now, the a pawn is the worst pawn for the knight to deal with. But this knight has wings. So knight f3. A4, running down the board. That's fast. And now the move, knight to D4. Centralizing the knight. By the way, only the knight has moved so far for white. The knight's just been dancing. I mean, that knight has just been like zing, 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 right? Zigging across the board. Now black has to make a decision. The only move is this one. King to C4. Black dare not play king to c3 because now white will play g5. And you cannot push this pawn because this check, thank you very much, killed the pawn, and we win. Yes? If you take the knight, we push. And if you've seen the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, you know where this is headed. And give me that, or even better, just to be funny, give me that queen, right? Sweet skewer. So... That's that. You cannot do that. You cannot put your king back here on c3. You must play king c4. However, you might be saying, well, but, but he's going to queen with check. Well, not so fast. We're going to go g5, a3, g6, a2. And now white can't go for this queening because then if you queen with check, black's just going to dance around your knight. Obviously not take the knight and queen and knight is not going to win like we did in the other position. Because now the king is running free, wild, and this queen is ready to start checking you and all kinds of stuff. So it doesn't work. All right, but that's easy enough to solve. We're back here. Don't push the pawn. So we play knight back to c2. King to c3. And now, if you push, the same problem happens. He takes your knight, and then you queen, you, you queen, he, black queens, and you got nothing to King will never be skewered. So on king to c3, white has to slow black down with this move, knight to a1. Now king to b2, g7, king takes knight, and queens. And now we have this study. 
Now, I don't know if how many of you have seen this study. This is actually a study in and of itself, white to move and win. And maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. I'm not even sure who was the first person to create this study, but white is actually winning. Now, if this H pawn did not exist on the board, the game would be a draw because of stalemate. I can show you why in a second. Actually, I'll show you why now. But because this pawn is here, it's a win. And this is why. King b2, queen b8 check, king c2. And we just start the zigzag maneuver, check. King b2, and we're coming closer. Ziggy zag, ziggy zow, ziggy zow. Queen a3, king b1, queen b3, check. We have the money moment, king a1. Now, if this pawn is not on the board, you can't win. This is a famous stalemate position, right? You cannot win. You have to move the queen and the king will leave from in front of the pawn if this pawn is not on the board because of this stalemate. But because the pawn is on the board, the winning move is, is, let me hear it from the group. And I'm hearing hello from Glasgow, Scotland, Okaneta. Nice to hear from you. Glad you're here. And it looks like, uh, we got some. We got a quick answer from Prophylaxis. I like that. I like that. All right. The goal is to get to C1. So the right move is to move the king to G4. Push the pawn to H3. Only move. Queen C2 right on time. H2 and Queen C1 is mate on a stick. Mate. All right. 27 moves it takes to win the game with the maneuver that I just showed. All right, all the way, uh, let me actually go right back to the top. I'm gonna jump right to the top. All, all the way from here, people, just watch, we're gonna go over the move, maneuver one more time. We watch the knight swing to b6, drop in there, stop the king from going to b5, go after the pawn, zig back. It's traveled from the, cor the h1 corner, went to the other side of the board, Right, went to the A file, went to the back rank, went to G5, and now it wins by going to the A1 corner. Hello. And this maneuver, Ziggy Zao again, and then King G4 and Queen C2, and it's mate. 27 moves deep. All right? It took me three hours to work on this puzzle, make sure everything was right. Just even putting the pawn on a seven versus a six, adding some stuff and getting efficiency. So I call up Mr. Kasparov, Getty. Hey, Gary, uh, we were talking business first and all. You know, how you doing? Gary, uh, you remember that puzzle I showed you earlier? And he's, he's like, what, what puzzle? He don't even remember the puzzle. You know, the one with the knight on h1, the king on h3, pawn on g5, pawn on h4, white pawn on g4, king on f4. He's like, oh, oh yeah. I can probably, he's rolling his eyes, right? He's like, yeah. I, Gary, I, I fixed it. I fixed it. He goes, yeah, and? I said, well, now I put a white pawn on a6 and a black pawn on a7. He said, okay, pawn on a6, pawn on a7. I said, yeah, now white to move and win. Now, I'm going to show you how it went down, folks. This is how it went down. I'm going to say this is exactly how it went down. I said, now white to move and win. Oh, yeah, right. So this is, yeah, you bring the knight back to A1, and then the queen uh, zigs, and then the king goes to G4, and you made him on C1. <laughs> what? Like what? 10 seconds. It took him 10 seconds to find mate on C1. Like who? I was like, what? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> like what? 10 seconds, people. He literally solved the puzzle like that. It was like mind blowingly. Like, what are you talking about? I don't know how he saw the board. Like, I thought about it afterwards. I said, he actually didn't calculate the puzzle. He just saw what he needed to see. He saw whoosh, knight that way. Yes, you're gonna take over here. Yes, you gotta bring your knight to stop the pawn. And if it's a puzzle, like if, if I'm right, if he, I'm telling him I'm right, 
So if it's a puzzle, the knight will go in the corner, and then at some point, you're going to get this little thing that's this famous puzzle where the king goes to g4. It was 10 seconds. It was 10 seconds. When I heard that, I was like, okay, so I get why I was never, ever going to be a world chess champion, ever, because people see stuff like this, like they see stuff that way. It was a whole different, like, like in the matrix, like you see something completely differently. It wasn't calculation at all. There's no way he calculated it all. He just got it. He just was like this to this, to that, to that, done. Yeah, blew up my puzzle. I thought it was a good puzzle. Like, I thought it was a good puzzle. I'm gonna say he must've had his best pills. Yeah, like, like seriously? That was like a cool puzzle you know like this is a good puzzle this is something like that has a, a little this is not like straight right this is definitely not straight like how you gonna do that to my puzzle anyway that's what gary did to my puzzle people yeah now you know when people do stuff like that that is just not right all right now i have not shown him my latest puzzle because i created it today I spit shined it and polished it and cleaned it up and I created a new puzzle today that when you see it, you're gonna be like, no way this is real. No way this is real. This puzzle, we're gonna take a journey. We're gonna take a journey to the other side. This puzzle has more flavor, more juice, um, like just, I mean, this is so nice, literally, more flavors than a bag of Skittles, okay? This is what's up. This is a serious, hardcore puzzle. This puzzle has a little extra twist to it, a little extra twist I want to show you, all right? This one is white to move and win, but you're not going to believe, I mean, like, you're not going to believe why white wins this position. You're just simply not going to believe. You're going to be like, no... There's no way that's the reason white wins. Now I could spoil it for you, or I could just ask you to remember what I said when I said white wins a certain way in this position, okay? White to move and win. No spoilers, okay? Nobody wants any spoilers. Fine, all right, I won't say anything. But there's a partial cheat in this puzzle because white actually doesn't win if black finds the right move. So. It's white to win if black blunders on the next move. So it wasn't really fair for me to call it white to move and win. Black has to blunder on the next move. If black doesn't blunder, black draws. So I'm going to actually show you what white to move and win is in a moment. All right? So I, I know I set that up wrong. My bad. My apologies. White's going to win, but only if black blunders on the very next move. I know that's not like, that's like a stupid puzzle, Maurice. I'm going to show you because I like what the drawing mechanism is for black. So I want to show that, but then I want to show the win. All right, let's start. Okay, I said a whole bunch of crap just now. Let me just get into the chess moves since I'm not into great explanatory mode right now. Let's just start with the first move. Don't bother trying to analyze. I'm just gonna play the first move, knight g6 check. All right, that's the first move. So that's, that's like a monster fork. You're hitting this, you're hitting this, you're hitting this. Looks like the next move is forcing. Actually, the next move, is not forcing. The next move black should play to draw is actually to play king g8. This is in fact a draw. I'll come back to that part of the story. I'll come back to that part of the story. Because right at this moment, this king looks so juicy and so ready to die that you can imagine white's like, I'm, I mean, black is like, you know what? I'm just gonna take your knight. I'm not gonna give you any chance to take on e7 with check if I move to g8. So knight takes. Now, officially, it is white to move and win. White to move and win, all right? Now, this is the beginning, the actual beginning of the puzzle. I could have set it up right here, and I promise you from this moment, every move is forced, every move is forced, and it's white to move and win. Now, are you ready? Because we're gonna go on, you know, the, you know the plane where they've been smoking too much? Uh, there, there's a plane like that. You know what I mean? Where just they, they, everybody's high on the plane. Everybody's high on the plane. That's the position we're going into right now. This is the psychedelic plane. This is like a plane straight out of the 60s. Everybody's on LSD. Everybody's high. That's where we're going right now. We're going on a trip, folks. I promise you, when we're done, you're going to be exhausted. You might need to eat some food. 
you're gonna be you're gonna be like looking having the munchies after we're done with this puzzle. That is the plan. And if Gary says to me, oh, you know what, this is straight, I will just stop creating puzzles from then on. But let's go. We're gonna do this puzzle right now. So King takes check. We got a check, a discover check. All right. Yeah, okay, whatever. Now, I just want to be very thorough about this position. The knight obviously can take the rook, but let's start with what if you don't take the rook? Well, throwing this rook in the way makes no sense. Throwing the queen in the way makes no sense. So the other one is to just move the king out of the way and say, what do you have? This kind of check is not going to work because we're going to put something in the way or put anything in the way, really. Well, we start, we'll start with this one with a check. So... That's not going to work. But white has a winning mechanism right now. Knight eight six, Check the start. Okay, we're on the road. King here. And now, come on, hoodie boys. Come on, Cutford. What you got? What you got? Hand party buddies. What you guys got? Come on. I know you guys see this one. You're going to enjoy this one. This one's delish. This one is delish. What's the next move? What's the next move? What's the ne Knight F7. Double check. Double check is correct. Now the king moves over. Now what's the next move? What's the next move? Come on now. What's the next move? Don't think it's too easy. Rook H8 mate. Oh, I caught you, Hampoff. I caught you out there. It is not Rook H8 mate because it ain't mate. Rook H8 is not mate. It's not mate. It's not mate. But it is mate in two. Bishop takes and now... Bring the knight back. That's what you want. A little cha -cha. Like, go and come back. Always zigzaggy. We like that. Zig is out. Zig is out. Being in my mate on a stick. That's nice. This is nice. This is nothing. This is not. This is nothing. This is nothing compared to what you're going to see. That's just a little, little nice, little, you know, appetizer to start it off. Like, you know, just to start off the meal. I will tell you that this... This idea I saw posted in another puzzle. So I'm going to say, it. yep, I stole from that puzzle. I saw the idea, but it was with nothing on the board. Just the knight, the rook, the bishop, and that was it. And this mate. And it was so, it was like, I looked at it. The puzzle, somebody showed it as a good puzzle. I looked at it. I saw it quickly. And I was like, that's not a puzzle. The guy just plays rook h8, knight h6, mate. That's not a puzzle. So I decided to create a puzzle. I know. I know. This is what we do. It often happens that people who are puzzle creators will see the theme from another puzzle and embellish it. Like the Saavedra position, if you've never seen this position where a king and a pawn fight a rook, the pawn has to under-promote in order to avoid stalemate. They start with that puzzle and then create a bunch of other themes. Like people see that, they're like, that's cool. Let's make it more complicated. And then they make more and more and more. If you want to Google... Uh, Saavedra, S-A-A-V-E-D-R-A -A -E position, one of the greatest puzzles, maybe the most famous chess puzzle ever. And look at the whole history behind it. You'll see that people have used that theme and created other puzzles. So this is my starting, the, the palette, the starting position that I use as inspiration. However, now we're going to get to my own piece of at, what I added to the puzzle. So black has to play knight takes h1. Okay, so right now we're doing what looks like we're doing good. Now, the next move, the next move you think is the next move. It looks like, wait a minute, if we can now get this rook to this square, we get to do it all over and they won't be able to take us. So let's play bishop to c3 check. Looks awesome. Looks great. Looks fab. Right? First of all, the king cannot move. Let's just establish that because we got a new mate in the house. Mate, that knight is sweet, right? I love knights, my favorite pieces. Knights. Yeah, they are, they're the best, okay? So bishop to c3. Uh, whoa, I just spoiled that. Too bad. Knight h1, I'm going too fast. Bishop to c3 check. The problem with this move is check. And now when you play takes, there's check. And you can't afford to have black start checking you. That just spoils the whole thing. And the ride is over. 
we lose. So what does white do? Well, the problem is black has too many rooks. And I already spoil the story. Part of the story. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. What does white have to do? White has to remove one of the rooks. Give me that. After, instead of checking, white has to play check first to get rid of the rook. That's it. One rook we need to get rid of. Now, rook takes is absolutely forced. And now we play check. And now, black's in trouble. If black plays rook to f6 to try to stop us, we take with check. Black takes. We swing to the right. Black moves. We gobble that. Black moves. We gobble that. Everybody can see we're up a rook. This one's over. Let's back up. I want to show you that again. I know I showed you that real fast. Remember the point. The point is the two rooks. You have two rooks. I got to get rid of one of them because this check doesn't work. So, again, queen takes f8. Rook takes f8. Bishop c3 check. Rook f6 doesn't work. We just established that. Bishop takes doesn't work because we know we get this mechanism again with less pieces on the board. Check. Boom. Check. Takes. And again, it's mate in the purest form. Nothing else on the board for us to worry about. Maybe we'd like to get rid of this white pawn. Okay. So queen f8 check. Rook takes f8. And bishop c3 check. The problem with chess, as DRMA D Dr. Mad, I was spelling that out, Dr. Mad 888 says is, the problem is that black doesn't have to play along, doesn't have to play ball. Black's like, listen, I can start with check. You can check, I can check. You check, I check. What's up with our checks? Check, check. Check, check, check. Yo, check, baby. What? This is check. So now you actually have to take this clown. And now black comes back and protects. And our beautiful mates that we were just looking at where we did the little knight thing and the disco and the double check and the rook sack and the knight smothered mate, that's all gone. That's all history. That was the first part of the meal. Now let's get on to the main part of the story, all right? Now we're gonna do this. White is in trouble. White has only one move. White's down a piece. So white goes, check, and black moves. Now black's laughing because if you dare take this knight to say, I got the piece back, now you're looking, you're like, but I'm also down a pawn. And black starts to think about winning, you know, moves like this. It's like, I'm gonna play something like this, and this pawn's gonna hang, and I got this passer. It's about to go to C3, and what you got? No, that's not working for us. So in this position here, <laughs> Eric Keto said Rook H8. If Rook H8 was the move, that would be so sweet. That would be so sweet, but no. <laughs> like, that's too much. So oh, white must now continue the attack. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you thought it was another move you wanted to suggest. White now continues the attack with Rook to H7. Almost, rook h8 was almost kind of there, kind of, you know, like maybe, but rook h7. Now, this is a mate mechanism he's going for. Like, say, if you push, you're getting mated, son. You are, you are gone. You're just gone. That's it. You're over. So you're not pushing. You're also not moving your bishop, because if you move your bishop to try to get away, then we already established that it's mate in one. So you are not moving your bishop. So this is the next part of the tale. Here we go, white is threatening nasty kill. You cannot move your rook away, as we did in the last position, because we have this guy, and then this nasty move that I remember the very first time I realized this was mate, it was in the Kingsman Chess Club. We're talking about like, nine, I, I'm gonna tell you the truth, it was like 1981 or 82. No, 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 must have been 82 or 83. When I played this move and my late friend Ronnie Simpson it was in a regular position. It was an actual game, not, not an end game like this. And I played this, and I was like, it's mate. It's unstoppable. And he was like, no, it's not. I was like, yes, it is. And it's like, no, it's not. I was like, no, nah, I just saw it. It's mate. And nobody ever showed it to me. I just figured out that this was mate. And rook f7 is just unstoppable, and that's the end of that. So let's not argue. So that mechanism you've got to study. You got to know. So that's over with. So now we've established you can move the bishop. You can't move the rook over this way. So you gotta accept that this bishop is history. Do you? Okay, no, not necessarily. Because we have this move, rook f7. Defend the bishop. All right, 
that leaves us only one move if we're white, and that is bam, knight to h6 check, bishop takes, rook takes rook. Now we have a position where black has a bishop, a knight, and a pawn for this rook. But because of this king position, black's busted. And also because of the lack of coordination between these two pieces, black is busted in this position. Rook f7 is not a good defense because of this. The point being now, if you move your bishop, you can't go to f4 to save your pawn. But if you go here, now I can't blunder. because I, This would be a blunder. This would throw away the win. Because suddenly the knight hops out and, uh, sorry, suddenly the king has to move because we might get mated. And the problem is that you can't get your pawn to push because the bishop is ready to take. And this knight is ready to come over. And if this king is not trapped, then knight versus king is a draw. What do I mean? I mean, like, if I played rook here, for example, then you move the knight, I push, I kill that sucker, I get my king off the back row, very important, and then my knight comes back and joins the king, and now it's a draw. So, are you with me, people? In this position, you cannot take this pawn. But he has a simple win. The simple win is rook to e7, hitting the bishop and threatening mate. And this way we win easily because after bishop c5, now we take the pawn, hitting the bishop and threatening the mate. Bishop goes anywhere it goes. It now has to leave this pawn alone. And this pawn goes and it becomes a queen. Nice variation. Okay, so far so good. But black does not have to oblige. Let's go back to this position here. Black can fight back. How? Well, if black attacks our knight, we've already established that this is killer. There's no check. You have to take this and get into a completely lost rook versus knight ending. So I'm going to back up. Black has to move the rook down. Doesn't matter. This one or this one. This was probably the better one on F1. Keep a distance. Now takes and moves. Now, now the move. Knight f6 no longer works because black has check. Hello. Spoils you. So after the king moves, white has to take this pawn. Now white wants to push, push, and then rook check and win if your rook is there too late. Completely winning position. It's over. Done. No. No. We're just beginning again. We're now in the third phase. The third. We're at the beginning of the end. We're almost there. We're at the beginning of the end. For those of you who have been following along with the story, we did not take any commercial breaks and we don't plan to. We're just going to finish this puzzle right now. So stay with me. It's almost over. Rook takes. We're planning to push this pawn. So black says, rook behind pawn. I want your pawn. Give me your pawn. I want your pawn. I, that's the only thing I got to worry about if I can get that pawn. And you might now think that the appropriate thing to do is to cut the king off. Just stop him, right? Just stop him. The problem with this move is we can disrupt with a check. And now you don't have this rook meet. And if you try to bring your king closer, Joey shows up. And we don't want Joey to show up. Joey was hanging out on H1. We don't want Joey to show up. Joey's got to stay on H1 out of the business because now as you try to bring your king over then billy bob shows up this knight's going to get into the act it gets a mess and trust me it's no longer winning so we don't want this position we've dis it's been disrupto when this when these pieces come over so this is the position this is the key position all right and i'm hearing you <laughs> say this might be the most complex puzzle of all time ever i, I you know I'm, I'm actually proud of it this this has happened I'm improving on my puzzle from eight years ago. So it took eight years for me to improve on it because it just occurred to me that I could do something different. All right, here we go. It is White's turn to move. It is White's turn to move. What should White do? What do you think? Call Gary. Hey, hey, Gary, Gary, is this straight? I just want to know. You think it's supposed to be straight because I don't think it's straight. You know what I'm saying? It's not straight. Anyway, White turn to move. Now what? What is the most Ridiculous move White could play right now. The ridiculous. This is the way for this puzzle to end. I'm just like, oh, Nirvana time. 
Basmania said, how many booms did I miss? Boom, boom, boom. There's three free ones for you. Wu Tax Clan says B6. Gary thinks for 15 seconds and sees the winning variation. I don't think so. Gary's not finding this in 15 seconds. I want to show this to Gary and see what he says. All right, here we go. The move is actually B6. It is B6. B6, donation of your pawn. I mean, you you think that has to be something else, like king here, for example. But the moment you try to do this, the king comes over. And king here, the last thing you want to have happen is this king to come over. Just doesn't work. Doesn't work. You could also play the move knight to e5. Threatening mate. This looked like it's going to be good until the guy moves his king over. And again, <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? You could play rook c5. Maybe you might set something up, but here comes Joey again. What the heck is Joey? Joey, we don't want Joey to act in the game at all. Joey's just annoying us. King e6, actually a serious move. Knight f7 is the threat. Knight f7 and then rook c8 is mate. Until black plays this move and pins our knight. We're like, how is he pinning the knight? Like, how did this happen? Maybe we can queen a pawn. Maybe we can go. Maybe we can queen a pawn. Like, this doesn't look bad. Maybe we can queen a pawn. No, you're not queening anything because Joey can now play knight d3. He's threatening check. He's threatening your knight. He's threatening to bring his king over. You can't just do anything. Any check, the king is moving. It don't work. It doesn't work. We go all the way back to here, to here, to here. The correct move is b6. Takes with check. And now we get back to the knight of seven, knight of six move. The threat is rook f7 mate. There's nothing to do to stop it but sack your rook. Only move. Takes. King takes. We got a mate threat. We got a mate threat. The king has to move over or either way to stop. And now rook takes on c4. And folks, we have come to the end of the puzzle because this knight will never, ever get back to that king. Ever. This knight is cut off. This is a well-known king versus rook, king and rook versus knight position or type of position where the knight is never getting home. You could try it. You could try to duck and duck. You would try anything. For example, if you try knight g3, say rook d4 so your king cannot move. And now your knight's like, where do I go? Where do I go? I got nowhere to go. I got to, where do I go? I can't go to e2 because then I'm going to get picked off. So I can't go there. King can't move because it's mate. King goes, it's mate. The game's over. Where do I go? If I go to h5, then, uh, my bad, my bad. Then he goes here, sends the knight down the board again. Go, go. And now the knight is slowly being corralled. You like that? The knight is slowly being corralled and it will go lost. Game over. What'd you think of that puzzle? I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I'm a psycho. Like, how did I come up with this puzzle today? Knight here, check. Knight takes is a bad move. King takes. This is the beginning of the puzzle, and it ends in that position, trapping the knight in the corner. Like, that's psycho. That's psycho. I got, I'm gonna tell you that's psycho. King takes, winning by clearing the whole board, hoovering the board, hoovering, queen sacks, counter queen sacks, waiting moves, captures, grab a pawn, sack your main pawn that's on the board, drop your knight in like it's hot, grab the pawn, and you win by taking the knight. I <laughs> know, we just like, that was one puzzle? That was one puzzle. That was indeed one puzzle. It feels like four or five. You could you could like come in at any moment you want to and say, new puzzle, white to move and win. New puzzle, white to move and win again. New puzzle, sick. That was my psycho puzzle that I did today. I've only shown it to one other person. You guys are getting the fresh stuff hot off the presses.